G'day guys, today we're going to show you some N20 engine development that we've been working on for a customer of ours, Navadi Tuned, uh, owned by a gentleman named Harry. So he's been working for some years on these N20 engines and developing them for his own car and he's found some weaknesses and flaws in them and we've gotten to the point now where we've come up with a final solution that should see this engine through for uh, a good long robust uh, life with high boost and high output a lot more than what the engine was designed for. So a lot of people might say, well, why not just put a six in? But a lot of people like the four cylinder, they're, they're lighter in the nose. There's a whole bunch of reasons people love these things. So we've helped Harry uh, develop this engine. He's designed a liner from Darton Sleeves in the US, which is one that I've got in my hand here. And today we're gonna show you basically the process from a standard block, how it's machined to be able to install these guys and what the benefits are of using it. So I'll let you hold that, Tony. Yep. Now, if we turn around and have a look behind you, we've got, here's a standard N20 block. So as you can see, it's an open deck design. About halfway down the liner, up to the top is the water jacket area, all through here. And they're an aluminium liner, of course, but they have a, a very thin iron liner on the top, which is, I think it's spray coated on, a twin arc spray system coats that on. So if you want to increase your piston to bore clearance or service the block, there's nothing you can really do because once you take that, that steel out of there, you're into the aluminium and then it's useless. So come across to here, you can see a block that we've had machined. So we've taken out the top half of the liner down to the base of the water jacket, which is all in here. And we've taken some material out here to slide our liner in which has some o-rings on it to seal the oil from the water and we've done some machining around the deck here and that's for the wings of the liner which um, I'll just get that again and show you so that just shows these wings here allow a tolerance fit of about half a thou so we cool this down and heat the block up to install it and then when it all cools it locks together <clears throat> that then gives the the liner stability compared to the standard liner, which doesn't have anything at all. So I'll hand this over to Tony and he can run through some technical about how this liner works and why it's so much better than a standard setup. Okay, so um, yeah, we've ensured that we've got a interference from this, uh, these wings on the, um, on the open deck uh, sort of uh, ceiling area there. Um, that's gonna give us that rigidity of the liner. So we don't, we can't, we won't see any movement there at the top of the, of the bore. Um, due to pressure or force. We've also done a lot of intricate design work to retain as much material as we can around the, the stud holes um, so that the gasket is sealing properly there um, to reduce the prevalence of any coolant you know, penetrating into those stud holes. Um, and the pressure from the Cooper ring, the way that we've designed it is, the head's pulled down uh, nice and tightly on the Cooper ring and that force is going straight down to the bottom on this balcony seat here which is the machine surface at the bottom of the bore so it's, vertic it's, a, it's a nice vertical positive broad seat con contact area in the bottom here and there you can see our three grooves for our sealing o-rings to, to separate the cool coolant area from the, uh, the oil wetted area in the bottom you can see it's quite a quite a rigid thick uh, solid assembly um, we've We've designed it so that we're getting minimal clearance between the liners, so we're, you know, we're keeping those clearances there nice and tight all the way through. Um, and that, that fit is very precise, as I said, around here with the interference, so we've got to actually warm the block and we cool the liners and get them in. And we think it's a, it's a pretty tight sort of a solution. Yeah, so this block has uh, the 10 head bolts that normally go in. The middle six are an M11 size bolt and the outer four are an M10. So we actually drill and tap these out to an M11 as well. So we have 10 sets of M11 that we convert to a stud and they're quite a long stud. They're probably about 250 mil long. They go really deep down into the block where the threads are. And the rest of the gasket is just here. Let's give you that, Tony. So that's the design of the gasket that we use on this engine. It's just a, a carbon composite gasket that has a, a bead installed on it. it. Just sits on the top like that. And then the floating fire rings just slot in the middle there. 
So you get a lot of clamping force on that because it's probably about one and a half mil thick, the solid steel. And again, yeah, that just pushes directly on top of the liner to the second stage of the seat that we've machined out. If you just have a look in this block here again for reference. Borrow that liner, please, Tony. So as Tony was saying, we sit down on this point here, which rests on this ledge here that we've machined out. So when the head goes on, we're clamping on this part of it, we're not clamping here or the bottom. It's just this part here. So that's a nice strong way of holding the liner still. And then these steady it, as we said before, that way. And you can see over here that perimeter seal on the gasket where the, um, where the sealant bead is around here. We've retained all of that area around there to maintain that seal um, consistency right through there. So we've done as much as we can with what's available to come up with this solution. I think it's going to be um, quite a good, good, uh, good long-term, you know, high power uh, solution for these N20s. Yeah, that's right. So we've got three of these that we're putting together at the moment and Harry's uh, talking with it, all you guys out there who want to do the same thing. Getting these liners is a bit of a wait. I think it's about 20 or 24 weeks at the moment to get these done. This has been prototyped and designed by Harry and Darton just for this engine. This is the first of its kind for this engine. So we're also looking to possibly be able to use these on an N55 engine as well, but we won't be able to get to that for a little while. So we're just concentrating on the N20s now because we have the product and we have a, a prototype put together. So we're going to now put this thing together and get it running pretty soon in a car here. Oh, for aftermarket conrods, you know, there's a relieving at the bottom of the bore. Oh yeah, let's uh, flip that over yeah. and just show what has to be done. So if you get uh, have a view down on that angle, on this side, you'll see that um, there's a bit, a bit of relieving to do there at the bottom. That's probably more than necessary, but um, that's just this prototype version. Um, and yes, just be aware, and everybody that doesn't know, the crankshaft is offset to one side on an N20, like some other more modern engines as well. So that's the reason why you've got the notch on one side, not on both sides, because the actual crank offset is, is significant on this engine. So we'll bring some more content to you guys just to show the product and result once it's all in. And hopefully we can, yeah, we can lock this one down as mm. being a good, robust option for the N20.